Hey guys, Crypto G in for another unplanned session. Today we are going to look at a project called We Are All Satoshi, whose genesis was spearheaded by a questionable CEO, not only with a checkered history of a failed Ponzinomic crypto projects, but who also excused himself by suggesting he was only the tech provider. 52% of course. This project, however, claimed to have a Bitcoin-backed reserve called the Vault Horizon. And this vault would collateralize the individual members' investments to a 50% contribution and would be locked up in the vault as a proof of reserve, which was under the custody of or would be under the custody of a board of trustees securing members of principal until either two conditions were met. We reached the 1st of September 2024 or Bitcoin reached $100,000 in market price, where it would then be dispersed back to the community in the form of a WAS token generation event backed by the Bitcoin from that vault. However, on September the 1st, 2023, after the daily MLM payments had already drained the somewhat murky marketing budget, which was essentially a hypothetical 68% of the 1 billion Genesis block token supply, Corp announced all liquidity was gone. The 159 Bitcoin worth approximately $7 million disappeared out of the vault. So today we are specifically going to do a forensic deep dive into the Bitcoin blockchain ledger using AI tools to help find and understand where the Bitcoin has gone. So if you're either a WAS investor or you just want to understand how to read the Bitcoin ledger and learn how to reduce your exposure to contradictory claims, then I suggest you stick around for the whole Bitcoin journey. But remember this video is timestamped so you can jump to any part if you don't have the time to watch it all the way through. But before we start, I just need to do the usual housekeeping. I'm not a financial advisor and this video should be used for educational and entertainment purposes only. You must seek professional advice before making any investment in either the traditional or the digital space as there is a risk of a partial or total loss. Make sure that you do your research, make sure that you try to self-custody your assets at all times, and remember the information in this video may well be out of date by the time you get to see it. Okay, so let's dive into this Vault Horizon. Hi Claude. I am planning another investigative look at where 159.288 BTC that was in the BEC32 wallet address BC1Q D9 ETH and was transferred out on 01 ST Sept 2023, 6.32 and 56 seconds to wallet address BC1Q DKG7, which is now empty. I would like to know which addresses this BTC was routed to after landing in the address ending 4 DKG7. I apologize, but I do not actually have access to real Bitcoin transaction data or wallet addresses. As an AI assistant without access to financial records or blockchain data, I cannot provide factual details about specific Bitcoin transactions or where particular funds were routed. However, I can explain at a general level that Bitcoin transactions are traceable on the public blockchain. By searching the blockchain, one can follow the flow of a specific amount of Bitcoin from wallet address to wallet address over time. Services exist that allow this kind of Bitcoin forensics. But without actual transaction IDs or wallet addresses provided, I cannot offer any specific tracing or insights into past flows of particular Bitcoin funds. Okay, so as I said in the previous video, the AI tools aren't actually plugged into the blockchain or the internet, unfortunately. So you'll need to paste the details in before you ask any questions. And as I say, it always pays to be polite. Certainly. I would be happy to analyze any blockchain data you can provide and try to understand the Bitcoin transaction flows and movements to the best of my ability. As an AI assistant without direct access to the blockchain, I rely on you to provide factual data that I can then analyze and interpret. Please go ahead and paste any relevant Bitcoin wallet addresses, transaction IDs, block scan information or other details, and I will assist with mapping out and tracing the transactions to understand where the funds traveled based on the data. My knowledge comes from what you supply, so the more transactional details you can share, the better I can trace the Bitcoin's path. Kular Bitcoin funds. Right, so we've now pasted the transaction and wallet data for that. 
Based on the data provided, it shows a total of 159.288 BTC was transferred from 63 different source addresses in the BC1QK, 3D98 wallet to the destination address BC1Q, 4DKG7 on September 1, 2023. Then on October 18, 2023, there is a transaction showing the full 159.288 BTC balance that was received on the 1st of September is sent out from BC1Q, 4DKG7. It is split into two outputs. 0.02 BTC is sent to address 1x, 5 and so. The remaining 159.268 BTC is sent to address BC1Q, D8 and Z. Okay, interesting. So it's important to try and follow the ledger transaction data along with the AI. And as you can see in this section here, there is a transaction from the wallet ending DKG7 for the total amount of Bitcoin. Uh, and it's split the main portion going to the wallet ending 8NZY and a small portion heading off to 1EXE. And probably for most of you, you, you may not understand what these multiple batched transactions are. So I asked Claude to elaborate a little bit on what is meant by being consolidated from the 63 source addresses. Sure, let me explain that consolidation in more detail. In the transaction on September 1st, 2023, there were 63 incoming inputs totaling the 159.288 BTC that was sent to the destination wallet address ending in 4DKG7. Specifically, I noticed there were small amounts being transferred from 63 different source addresses that were all part of the same larger wallet starting with BC1QK, 3D9 eat. So it looks like the holder of that source wallet initiated many small transfers from addresses in their own wallet, consolidating multiple inputs into a single destination address ending in 4DKG7, for a total of 159.2883610 BTC combined. So again, at this point, there can be a little bit of confusion between how there can be multiple addresses in the same wallet. So I asked Claude about clarifying that too. Sure, it's very common to have multiple Bitcoin addresses managed by the same wallet. Here's a quick explanation of how that works. A Bitcoin wallet does not consist of a single address, but rather a set of private keys and their associated public addresses. The wallet software interfaces with the Bitcoin network and manages these keys slash addresses behind the scenes. When you receive Bitcoin in your wallet, it actually sends coins to one specific address at a time. To enhance privacy and other use cases, a common practice is to generate a new receiving address for each incoming transaction. So over time, as your wallet receives more payments, your balance ends up distributed across multiple Bitcoin addresses, all still controlled by the same wallet, private keys. The wallet software tracks all these addresses together to tally your total balance, even though the coins are split up. Okay, so I was glad that I asked that because it's helpful to understand in more detail some of the nuances of the blockchain workings and obviously the significance of private keys in cryptographic asset ownership. You make an excellent point. Private keys are critically important for proving ownership and control over cryptocurrency funds. Even if one's coins are distributed across many different public addresses for various reasons, the private keys tie them to a single wallet and allow the holder to consolidate, transfer and sign transactions with those funds. So what we did at this point was take the next wallet address where the 159 Bitcoin was sent to and copy the page covering all of the transactions below. And as you can see on here before we head back to Claude, that there is a similar pattern of the amount being split into two going to separate addresses. Based on the additional transaction data, it shows the 159.268 BTC that was received by BC1 Ku, D8 and Z on the 18th of October 2023 was then sent out in its entirety around 20 minutes later in a new transaction. The full 159.268 BTC was split into two outputs. 10 BTC was sent to address 1XE, 5 and so. 
the remaining 149.268 BTC was forwarded to address BC1QZ E96S. Now, if you pay close attention to the detail, you may spot certain similarities, patterns that present themselves. It's difficult when you've got this 32 character alphanumeric address really hard to unless you have that savant ability to, to recognize patterns in a complex environment but i did spot one similar address that i wanted claude just to clarify for me i also thought it might be helpful to tag the wallet addresses at this point to try and make things a little easier to follow i always liken this to your contact list on your phone imagine if you only just had the numbers there so adding names relevant data to tag or name a wallet is very useful when you're using any of the block scanners and you can do this by signing up to that relevant block scanner making your own account and then tag the wallet addresses from there indeed you're correct that address ending in five and so did receive 0.02 btc in the first transaction we analyzed from the original vault horizon 1 og wallet bc1 qk 3d9 eat and now an additional 10 btc in this second transaction from the wallet i'll label as vault horizon 2.0 to continue tracing the funds with your specified name labels. 159.288 BTC consolidated from Vault Horizon 1 OG and sent to Vault Horizon 4 DKG 7 on the 9th of January 2023. On the 18th of October 2023, the 159.288 BTC in Vault Horizon 2.0 was forwarded. 0.02 BTC, greater than 1 XE. 159.26833921 BTC, greater than BC1 Ku. 20 minutes later, the 159.268 BTC in BC1 Ku, Kinzi was sent. 10 BTC, greater than 1 XE. 149.268 BTC, greater than BC1 QZ. When you're doing this kind of research, it pays sometimes to ask the AI tool to shorten or abbreviate things, especially when you're dealing with these long addresses and you're getting the text-to-speech tool to read them out. And as you can see here, you've got the flow through from the original Vault Horizon, which is not the Vault Horizon link that is currently in the WAS dashboard. That is what I've tagged as Vault Horizon 2.0. I know that there are also two in there. Um, I haven't bothered looking at the second option for the purposes of not getting too in detail. And I think this is the, the following the main amount of Bitcoin is or following the payload, as they might say in a crime caper, if you don't want to follow the dummy car. Although that may make another interesting video later on once I've had a little dive into what happens over that side of the electron. And I labeled the secondary wallet that was taking a piece of the Bitcoin each time it moved as Skim Corp Wallet 1, which as you can see is this address ending in FSO. I also asked it to label the next wallet in line from the Vault Horizon 2.0 as a Corp Router wallet number one, because this process goes through a number of what I might refer to as routing wallets, as you'll see very, very shortly. And this is just the updated flow of the Bitcoin with the relevant tag. So we rinse and repeat with the copy and paste onto the next wallet here which has a very similar pattern again heading to a, another wallet and also fso being the skim wallet and here's the breakdown from claude with the skim court wallet one and this i asked to label as a router two or court router two here is the updated flow corp router one bc1 qzd c96s received 149.268 BTC on the 18th of October 2023. A few hours later on the 18th of October 2023, Corp Router 1 sent this 149.26831738 BTC in a new transaction, 20 BTC, greater than Skim Corp Wallet 1, 129.268 BTC, greater than Corp Router 2. Okay, so again, we just 
copy and paste and repeat the process with the next wallet address and as you can see we've got a similar pattern with 20 Bitcoin going to the skim court wallet and the remaining Bitcoin going to a new wallet which we then will lay as court router 3 here you can see and the skim court wallet is getting the other portion of the BC. Got it. I've labeled the new wallet address as BC1Q04HFJ as Corp Router 3. Tracing the 109.268 BTC through Corp Router 3. Received 109.268 BTC on the 18th of October 2023 forwarded in a new transaction on the 19th of October 2023. 22 BTC greater than Skim Corp Wallet 187.268 BTC. Okay, and obviously we will just repeat this process again and rename this wallet. And it goes through this cycle until each time splitting off a portion of the remaining Bitcoin. As you can see, this one is MEQ. This is a different wallet address. So we label this. Obviously, this is the court router, be the court router five. And then I labeled this as skim wallet two i believe yes yeah, skim court wallet two and router five and then copy and pasted the next again a similar split of 20 to 22 into skim court wallet two and the rest to the the next router router six and then once again in the next transaction we've got court router seven until the in the final router wallet the remaining Bitcoin ends up going to the Skim Court Wallet 2. At this point in the video, maybe just copy the wallet there if you haven't been following Thriana and on the blockchain. So at this point, we ask Claude just to summarize the flow the pattern of movement from the first wallet to the last. Sure, let me summarize the high level flow of the 159.288 BTC we traced. Origin. Vault Horizon 1 OG, BC1 QK. Consolidated funds from Vault Horizon 1 OG and sent 159.288 BTC to Vault Horizon 2.0. On the 9th of January 2023, on the 18th of October 2023, Vault Horizon 2.0 forwarded 0 0.02 BTC, greater than Skim Corp Wallet 1 159.268 BTC greater than Corp Router 1 Corp Router 1 sent on the 18th of October 2023, 10 BTC, greater than Skim Corp Wallet 1 149.268 BTC, greater than Corp Router 2 over next 24 hours, funds repeatedly consolidated and portions split to Skim Corp Wallet 1 Skim Corp Wallet 2 final 21.268 BTC to Skim Corp Wallet 2 on the 19th of October 2023 here is a flowchart summary. Insert flowchart diagram showing the path from Vault Horizon. So there highlights the limitation of these tools at the moment. I think ChatGPT possibly five or, or uh, there are some options anyway that you could get a flowchart. But Claude unfortunately isn't uh, capable of doing that just yet. So here I thought I'd have a little look at the Skim Court Wallet 1 and see what was happening with the Bitcoin that was skimmed off through the first few routing cycles and it shows that the skim court wallet one received bitcoin 10 times between the 18th of october and the 19th of october totaling 72 bitcoin and the total of this bitcoin was then forwarded in its entirety in batches over five transactions to this wallet address leaving no Bitcoin in the Skim Court Wallet 1, which just seems a little bit odd that the Bitcoin is being moved in this pretty convoluted way. So I, I asked Claude whether or not deducing from the gas costs for each of the batched transactions to the wallet ending 44S6, whether this was a cost saving process uh, because I was really trying to understand why the Bitcoin balance was split in that way. Good observation on the transaction fees. Let me analyze. There were five separate transactions sending batches of Bitcoin from Skim Corp Wallet 1 to the wallet ending 44S6. 
the transaction fees for each forward ranged from 46,100 sats to 46,600 sats. Sats are just simply, if you don't, if you're new to this space, sats are just a fraction of, of a Bitcoin. You raise an excellent question. If these were sent solely to save on transaction fees, I would expect each batch to pay a lower total fee compared to sending the 72.02 BTC all at once. However, that does not seem to be the case here. The fees paid for five transactions total around 230,000 sats. Sending the full 72.02 BTC balance in one transaction likely would have cost less than 230,000 sats in mining fees. So no, it does not appear the batches were used as a cost-saving mechanism in this case. More likely explanations. The batches were an attempt to obfuscate the trail and not raise suspicions of a single 72 BTC transaction. Breaking into smaller pieces may look less conspicuous. There may be limitations set on the receiving wallet to only accept up to 20 to 22 BTC deposits at a time. So breaking into batches worked within those wallet constraints. Yeah, and, and this, although it was broken up into fractions of 20 to 22 Bitcoin, that a Bitcoin was, the last batch was sent off in one large amount to the final wallet ending 446 which as you can see i then asked it to add as the or tag as the final destination so i'll in this particular wallet that we've tagged got it i have labeled this wallet address as x as final destination reviewing the recent transactional activity of the final destination wallet it received multiple batches of Bitcoin on the 18th of October 2023, totaling 69.998 BTC from Skim Corp Wallet 1 that we had traced. An additional 21.999 BTC was received from Skim Corp Wallet 1 on the 19th of October 2023. Recent sends from the final destination wallet have been transfers out in batches, including 17.001 BTC on the 18th of October 2023. 9.999 BTC on the 17th of October 2023. 0.999 BTC on the 16th of October 2023. So it appears the final destination wallet received and held the Bitcoin we traced from the original Vault Horizon wallets. More recently, it has started transferring that Bitcoin out in batches to other addresses. So at this point, we have found seemingly the wallet address for where the Vault Horizon Bitcoin has been sent. Now, there's some suggestion that this Bitcoin was sent to a yield bearing crypto bank and so i just wanted to see whether or not there were any interesting patterns of movement from this final destination wallet i do not see consistent repeated transfers to any particular individual bitcoin addresses that could signify known associative entities or other entities in the obfuscation chain we revealed the send transactions seem to move funds to different wallet addresses each batch None of those receiving wallets stand out to me as being identified exchanges or services at first glance. However, given the international scope of cryptocurrency, recipients could potentially convert funds to fiat currency through unregulated or lesser known exchanges slash services that may be harder to track. Without more transactional history or additional identifiable details on who controls the receiving wallets, it is difficult to confidently deduce further intent, associations, or categorize recipients as exchanges, but definitively signs of intentional obfuscation through usage of multiple interim routers prior to consolidation here. In summary, no immediate clear repeat transaction patterns from the final destination wallet jump out from this dataset, but recipients could liquidate through lesser known crypto to fiat avenues. Interesting. So I also at this point thought well, what else what other line of inquiry can we follow and i wonder whether or not there was any indication as to the interesting activity periods for the input and output uh, which might give us an indication of which time zone the wallet owner could be residing in great question analyzing the time patterns of transactions involving the final destination wallet on the input side this wallet has received large batches of Bitcoin at varied hours, including morning slash afternoon slash evening in Eastern time zone as one reference frame. 
so there isn't an obvious concentration of activity purely in one region's business hours. Transactions both in and out spread throughout different ET working slash non-working times. Of course, with cryptocurrency the user could be located anywhere. So, as I said earlier, it's very difficult to track the asset flow with these complex alphanumeric address labels, especially when the transfers are actioned in in such an obfuscated way. So I, I told Claude that the WAS CEO had the private keys to the original Vault Horizon 1 and that the 159 Bitcoin was sent to a a rumored was sent to a bank well rumored he said that he sent it to a bank called cash aa crypto bank at the time i had i got a message that it was the sasha crypto bank but i hadn't been able to verify that information but i wanted to know whether or not there was some sign of this dividend yield of three percent that was being paid out or is supposedly being paid out to the community and so i asked him whether or not there was any uh, indication of of this regular dividend which is really feeding back into one of the questions that i asked previously based on the information provided there is no clear evidence that this final destination wallet is distributing a three percent yield amount consistent with 159 btc to any single receiving address here is an analysis of key points. The original 159 BTC that was consolidated did flow through this wallet based on earlier tracing. However, recent sends from the final destination wallet have been in larger uneven batch amounts, not small regular distributions indicative of a yield payment. 17 BTC 9.99 BTC 0.99 BTC no recipient wallet is receiving a reoccurring small payment equivalent to tilde 3% monthly yield on 159 BTC, which would be 4.77 BTC per month. There are also no outgoing transactions to any identifiable stablecoin or ERC-20 contract addresses that match the described USDT on a BTC-20 network for dividend distributions. So in summary, no clear evidence found of yield-based distribution flows that match the described 3% monthly or dollar USDT BTC 20 dividends based on the 159 BTC principle. The batch sends are much larger and so far one time. I will keep analyzing for any recurring smaller flows indicative of yield payments. So at this point I am sort of struggling. I'm pretty much out of lines of inquiry and I told Claude that I was alarmed by the inefficient batch movements of the original BTC through multiple wallets to the final destination, unknown wallet, uh, especially as the Vault Horizon proof of reserve wallet was presented to be a locked vault of the WAS community's investments, where 30% of the individual investment would be used to purchase Bitcoin and then held for 500 days until the end of September 2024, or Bitcoin were to reach 100k. And that was suggesting, and that on the basis that this Bitcoin would collateralize the principal investment amount. And I told Claude that I was looking to understand why and where that locked Bitcoin had moved, hoping to clarify all the contradictions that seem to have unfolded since these claims were made. And I also asked Claude whether or not the final destination wallet was a wallet that required multiple signatures, which is usually the case in a bank or a corporate Bitcoin storage scenario or situation. Based on the information provided, there are no clear signs that indicate the final destination wallet is set up as a multi-signature Bitcoin address. When analyzing this wallet address, there are a few reasons I can deduce it does not appear to utilize multisig. The address does not begin with three. Standard multisig addresses start with a three based on Bitcoin address formatting conventions. There have been no multi-party signatures required on any transactions from this wallet so far. All sends batching funds out only reflect needing one signature, presumed from primary private key holder. There's no evidence that a multi-owner smart contract, threshold signature setup, or other hallmarks of jointly controlled wallets seem apparent for this particular address. 
So although multi-sig can add helpful security controls and distribution of signing authority across multiple entities, this final destination wallet does not exhibit any identifiable traits of utilizing that type of shared custody model. So my final question to Claude was what its thoughts were on the Vault Horizon being a collateral holding of investors' contributions in the WAS project. Based on tracing the flow of funds from the original Vault Horizon 1 OG wallet address, there is no evidence it served as an ongoing collateralized holding vessel for investor contributions, as would be expected for that stated purpose. The consolidation of funds out of that wallet address and through multiple interim wallets before reaching the final destination does not align with behavior of safely securing contributor assets. One would expect a legitimate collateral wallet to remain static, with private keys appropriately secured by fiduciaries and redundantly backed up in durable storage. Instead, the rapid transfer out through a complex routing chain shows concerning contradictions against principles of properly handling investor collateral assets. While definitive legal judgments would depend on specific circumstances and claims, strictly from an ethical perspective, the asset movements seem suspiciously contradictory to good faith management of investor funds, especially given the descriptions of collateralized holdings for community contributors. In summary, wallet activity sharply diverges from expectations of how collateral wallet custodians should handle other people's money. Hopefully investigations bring clarity and potentially just resolutions where possible. <laughs> so many, so many other questions. I think that's probably about as much as anyone can handle of uh, Bitcoin block scanning adventure. And I hope that the information that you have seen and heard has some value to you going forwards. And I hope that it helps people understand how they can utilize the blockchain ledgers in a way that allows us to spot contradictions between what we hear from corporate, what we hear from speculators, what we hear from this tribal community, the noise that we hear from this tribal community. And although we can't yet say with 100% accurate, or we can't deduce clearly enough who owns what exactly, we can follow the movement of those assets and we can then challenge the lack of transparency that clearly is endemic in this particular project that we have run the analysis on today. And I would encourage you, if you are an investor, to consider your position and look for an exit strategy to reduce your exposure. But I would also encourage you to ask your corporate representatives these questions. Where is the audit? Where's the validation for, where's the reasoning and the consensus behind this? I I get the fact that it makes sense to draw a yield on something instead of having that asset just sitting in a cold wallet doing nothing. But this specifically was a proof of reserve based project. That was the core reason that people bought into the WAS system. And the fact that that Bitcoin has moved from the wallet. And not only has it moved, but the contributions over a period of time weren't happening. So based on all of this lack of transparency and lack of audits, I genuinely think that it's time for... I need a bigger flag, but I'm just going to wave this at this point. And it's the duty of the CEO of that project to answer these questions and to provide the validity, provide the reasoning and provide a board of trustees. If you claim that you have a board of trustees, have one. Where is it? Anyway, I'm going to end up ranting like somebody else I know who's got a bigger flag than me. But as I said earlier, I hope that this has given you some more insights into not only what's happened to the Bitcoin in this particular project, but how to look at the blockchain scanners and how to read the matrix and to appreciate the benefits of using AI tools going forward. The cryptic crypto caper, unraveling the case of the contradictory collateral. Crypto G out.